kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and to be business savvy. So uh, he kind of haggles with them about what he's going to pay them for chores around the house and such. So his two sons are now like, you know, eight years old and nine years old, and he says, you know, I'm going to pay you for mowing the lawn and, and trimming the trees. And I'm going to pay you $5 an hour, he said to his two sons, Adam, and I forget the second son. And the sons say, okay, Dad, okay. And, and then they come back about a couple weeks through the summer, and they say, Dad, you know, this is a lot of hard work, and $5 isn't very much. How about $7? He says, deal. <laughs> deal, he says. So now they're working for $7 an hour. And they finish the summer, and then the next summer comes around, and they're working for $7 an hour, mowing the lawns and trimming the trees, and and then they find out that other tree trimmers make $15 an hour. So they come to Dad and they said, Dad, those guys over there make $15 an hour and you're only paying us $7. You should give us at least $10. And he says, deal. Deal. I'll give you $10. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to train them that they have to kind of, you know, be fend for themselves, okay, in the business world. Well, that's good uh, mastery and sometimes uh, we fail to do that. Uh, I, one of my first cars, I bought a Toyota Corolla for $1,000, and somewhere along the way I forgot that you had to do oil changes every six months, and now it's overheating, and I sold it for $200, and the guy took it home and put in an oil change, and it worked just fine. So I, I learned the hard way, <laughs> take care of your belongings, oil change every 3,000 miles or 5,000 or <laughs> six months, remember that? So, uh, business deals. Zechariah is a chaos in our gospel today. He has a major conversion. As his business approach changes immediately. Because as a tax collector, he was kind of sifting the pot, taken off the top. And so he was despised by everybody because he really was a Jew, but he's taking taxes for the Romans. So all the Jews hate him. And the Romans don't trust him anyway, and so he's kind of in this spot. Well, he meets Jesus and everything changes. And what happens? He says, If I have extorted anyone, I will repay fourfold, and I'm going to give half of my belongings to the poor. Now that is a pretty extraordinary conversion. That's, a one, that's like a true sign something has really changed. What was his greatest value before? All the accumulation of personal wealth, prosperity, and now it's the glory of God. In our own world today, uh, sometimes hard to trust, I, I feel like, who is operating ethically out there? I mean, we're going to vote for a president, right, soon? See at the polls? <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, that would be terrible, but... I'm going to, of course, there's principles we have, principles of life, principles of the poor, principles of God, keeping God in the public square. So you apply those principles when you vote. But it just seems like there's chaos with lack of ethics. I mean, when you hear that a million dead people are voting, you say, what is going on? Who's taking these dead people's names into the voting booth? And, of course, our Trump and um, Hillary are slamming each other, throwing mud at each other's face regularly, right? You did this, you did that, you said this, you said that. And so we're wondering, can we have ethical leaders that we can trust? And what I want to say to young, young people is this. If you end up in a workplace, maybe you have uh, a, a summer job somewhere and um, on your way to the full after graduation job, and you start seeing people that aren't so ethical in a business place, you decide today and now and then, I will not be like that. I am going to be a person who lives justice in the workplace, in the public square, even if those around me are not doing so. And so Jesus wants to take us and strengthen us and give us hope because there are thousands and millions of people out there who say I will never treat a customer or a fellow worker unjustly. There are millions of Christians doing that. And sometimes in the greater periods of darkness, the greater lights shine. Okay? So 
I hope that you do vote this next week. Um, I consider it a civic duty, and I pray you bring your moral Christian values to that booth when you vote, and that we will pray for our government, and we will pray for our commerce, that we can get back to this surety that what's being done by those people who guide and lead us, in fact, is morally good. All right. So let's take a moment now in the silence of our hearts and pray for our nation.